What is up guys? Fahir here from AwesomeDudes.com and I have a huge announcement for you. In my most popular course, you will learn how to create RPG and first-person shooter multiplayer games. And you can get that course at a huge discount. And this is not the best part. The best part is that I have created a special coupon code and when you use it to enroll in the course, you will automatically be enrolled in my giveaway competition and you will get a chance to win some cool prizes. What are those prizes? Well, first place is gonna get a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place is gonna get an iMac 27 inch with Retina 5K display. And third place is gonna get a 13 inch MacBook Pro. All you have to do to enroll in this competition is enroll in the course and link to it is in the description below. You will also find another link to the video where I explain about the giveaway competition in more depth. In short, I will record myself drawing the winners and sending them their prizes depending on which places they are or they win first, second or third. So we'll see me sending these MacBook Pros and you will see me announcing the winners and I will post that on my YouTube channel. So again, first prize will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second prize is 27 inch iMac with 5K Retina display. And third place is 13 inch MacBook Pro. What is up guys? Fahir here from awesometudes.com. And now that we have the player and we are moving him left and right, he is jumping from one bound to another. Let us add our first obstacle in the game. So we need to go into sprites and then enemies and obstacles. The first one is going to be our flag. So simply drag and drop the flag right here. And for this flag, what we need to do is set the scale on the x-axis at 1.23. Now this flag is not going to be on its own. We are also going to have the squirrel or the squirrel and we're going to add it as a child of the flag. So before we create the animation of the squirrel, as you can see, we have four animations or one, two, three, four. Yes, four animations from the squirrel. We are going to take the flag. And we're gonna add a box collider 2D on it. Now you can see that the box collider is all around this flag. We don't want it to be like this. Instead, we are gonna resize that box collider. So the size on the X axis can be 1024. The size on the Y is gonna be 0.52. And I'm gonna set the offset Y to be at 0.06. So this is this green thing, do you see this green rectangle thing? This is our collider that is on the flag itself. So now we can select our squirrel and we can create it. Now before we actually create the squirrel, squirrel, we will create a folder inside of the animation. So assets, animations, right click, create a new folder. This is going to be our squirrel animation. So it's S-Q-I-R-R-E-L, squirrel. And we are going to create the animation for our squirrel. So sprites, enemies, Select all four of these, drag and drop the squirrel here. Bam, here it is. And I'm gonna save it into animations and then squirrel. And here it is, squirrel like this animation and hit enter. As you can see, the squirrel is too big. If I put it right here and go into the game tab, it is bigger than the player itself. So we do not want that. What we want to do is we want to resize the squirrel. So we are going to say 0.4 on the X and 0.4 on the Y for X and Y scale. We're also going to add a box collider 2D on the squirrel and resize it because currently it is all over the squirrel. So the size on the X is going to be 1.39 and the size on the Y is going to be 0.88 and we're also going to offset it. So offset on X is going to be negative 0.28 and offset on the Y is going to be 0.17. Now, we also need to add a rigid body on the squirrel. So here I'm going to go add component, a rigid body to D on the squirrel. I'm going to attach it. I'm not going to set it to be kinematic. I'm going to leave it a dynamic. 
And also what we want to do is we want to add that squirrel to be the child of our flag because the flag and the squirrel go well one with each one with another. Let me just rename the squirrel here in the hierarchy as squirrel and I'm gonna well put it to be under the flag. Let me just set it at zero for the x-axis and for the y-axis I'm gonna reposition it something like this but since gravity is being applied on the squirrel it will be well it will fall down on the flag itself. Now, in regards to the flag, when we set it to be at position 0 for the x-axis, this is how it looks like. We are also going to take the flag, set it at negative 3 for the z. Does this work? Actually, it needs to be at 3, not negative 3. So set it to be at 3 so that it is like this. You see, it's behind our obstacles. Now, one thing that we want to do is, you see, when we run the game, notice what's happening here. So you see, we have the flag and it's going or not going down. We will cover that in a moment. But we also want the squirrel, squirrel to move left and right. And in order for the squirrel to move left and right, we need to create, well, a script for our squirrel. So if we go inside of our assets, scripts, right click, create, new folder, enemy scripts. This is where we are going to put our enemy scripts, well, the folder. And here I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And I'm going to say here squirrel. So S Q I R R E L or R yeah, E L. Yeah, that it is. Sometimes I don't know how to spell. So forgive me. Right click, create a C sharp script, squirrel and attach it on the squirrel itself. So something like this, attach it on the squirrel, double click it and open it in Mono Develop. Let me just hold enter, actually first tag the class, hold enter just to give a little bit of space. And if we go here on top, we are gonna add some variables. The first one is gonna be a private float, move speed, which by default is gonna be equal to three. And we need, update we don't need the start function so we're not going to initialize anything but we need to create a function that's actually going to move the squirrel so here we're going to say void move and we're going to use the same technique as we did with our background so what we want to do here is create a vector 3 temporary position which is equal to transform position and here we're going to say temp.x plus equals speed multiplied with time dot delta time and simply take the transform position is now equal to temp. If we put this function right here in the update, it will start moving the squirrel, but we will have one problem. So if we go back here and run it, you see the problem, the squirrel is trying to go away here and trying to touch things and whatnot, but it is not working. So that's not working. And why is it working? Well, because we're just moving the squirrel to the right side. Plus equals to is the same thing as if we say temp.x is equal to temp.x plus move speed multiplied time dot. So it's time dot delta time. So let me just type it out correctly here, time dot time delta time finally thank you very much so this right here is the same thing as writing this here but this is a shortcut plus equals to we don't need to type well like this as you just see here now what we need to do we need to detect when we touch our bounds and since both of our bounds, so if we go here and if I select the side boundaries you see the box collider actually the box collider that is attached on them is not set to be a trigger. And if we select the squirrel, the box collider attached on the squirrel is not set to be a trigger. So we cannot use on trigger enter. Instead, we need to use here void on collision enter 2D, which takes a collision 2D as an argument. And I'm gonna going to call it target. So this on collision enter will be called when two colliders touch each other. So when the squirrel touches this side of the bound, on collision enter will be called. Or if it touches the left side, on collision enter will be called. What we want to test here is if the squirrel has touched the side bound. So we are going to see here if target, so target, which is this parameter right here. So this is the target parameter collision 2D that's passed inside of this function. 
which enables us to get information about collisions such as the game object we have collided with. So if the target dot game object and its tag is equal to side bounds. So if it's equal to side bounds, we have touched our bounds. Now we need to go in our Unity editor, go inside of our tags. So go on top. Here it is. We have side bound. So here, if we select all of these, they are tagged as side bound. So not side bounds, but it's side bound. So don't add S or otherwise it will not work. I was just going over to my Unity Editor to make sure which tag we have applied. And if I left it at bounds with S, plural, not singular, then bam, we have a problem. So this name right here, in the tag, this name right here needs to match up with the name right here or otherwise it will not work. So if we have collided with our side bounds, what we want to do will simply we want to change direction. So we are going to say here move speed will be multiplied by negative one. So multiplied equal to by negative one, which will change the value of the speed. What does that mean? Well, that means that if the speed was positive, now it will be negative. If the speed was negative, now it will be positive. So every time we touch one side, it will make the speed either positive or negative and it will make our squirrel go into the left or the right side. Let me demonstrate that and we will have one problem that we will see and fix. So notice now the squirrel is going backwards. You see the squirrel is going left and right, going left and right. Let me just zoom in. How can I do this? Okay. Never mind. You can see what I mean. So you see the squirrel is going left and right, left and right. You see left, right, left, right. Now the problem here is that the squirrel is not changing the direction where it is facing. So what we need to do here is create a vector three temporary variable, which is equal to transform that a local scale and temporary variable X, which is well, the scale or the direction on the X axis, we're going to multiply that. So multiplied equals to by negative one. And the reason for it is the same thing. We are going to change the direction. If the scale is now positive, it will be negative. So notice what I mean. So if I go here, in the scene and zoom in, you see when the scroll hits this side, it's going to go in. So when it hits the right side, it's going to start to go to the left side and it needs to face the left side. So that means that the scroll and let me just type here 0.4. That means that the scroll will now be facing the left side, which is the negative. You see like this, the negative, this is the positive, negative, positive, negative. It will simply change the direction where it is facing by multiplying this with negative one. So now transform local scale is equal to temp. And we can now go back in our Unity editor and test to see if the squirrel will change direction. So bam, it is changing the direction. Bam, changing direction. Bam, it is in fact now changing the direction when it hits the bounce. Now, one more thing that we need to do is for the flag itself. So here in the enemy scripts, I'm going to create a new C sharp script, which I'm going to call enemy move. And this one, we're going to attach it on the flag itself. So you see the flag itself, it needs to move down same way as our bounds are moving down. So if we go here in the enemy move function, let me just, or actually script, excuse me. So here I'm going to tag it with the class tag, hold enter to give a little bit of space. Here on top, we need to have a public float move speed, which is going to be equal to one F. We also need a private float, which is going to be camera Y. And inside of our start function, we're going to say camera Y is equal to camera. So camera dot main dot transform that position dot Y. And let's say minus 10 F just so that we, well, know from where we need to turn off our game object. Now notice this, or what we need to do now is that we need to type void move, which is a function that's going to move our game object. And we're going to call move in the update. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with our BG mover. So vector three temp is transform position. Our temp dot y is minus equals to move speed multiplied with time dot delta time and transform position is now equal to temp reassigning it back. 
So this is nothing new, it will simply move the game object down, we did this already, but in our void, deactivate, so deactivate, we are simply gonna test if transform dot position dot y is less than cameras y, then what we want to do is we want to say game object set active false to deactivate the game object from our game. We're going to call it right below the update. So we are going to test if our own Y position, so the Y position of the enemy move, which is attached on the flag itself, if it's less than the camera's Y that we have calculated here, then we will deactivate our game object. Deactivating the game object releases memory in our game because we are getting rid of game objects that we don't need. We don't need them in terms of when this flag goes down. So if the flag goes down like this, we don't need it anymore because it's out of sight. We don't need it. The player does not see it. It's not important to us. And because of that, well, we need to get rid of it. The simplest way is to use set active false, which means the game object will be deactivated. That means, notice if I select the flag, and notice here in the inspector, we have this cube icon right next to it, we have a checkbox, and then we have the name of the game object. If I uncheck this checkbox, bam, you see, the game object is no more. It's not visible in the scene view, and it's not visible in the game view which means it is deactivated. It is still in the hierarchy here. We could potentially activate it again if we have a reference to it, but when it's not active, all scripts that are attached on this game object will not work. All scripts that are collisions and physics that is applied to this game object will not be calculated when the game object is not active. Now we do, do need to set the move speed to 5 because it needs to be the same speed as our side boundary so that they move in the same harmony, so to say. So if I hit the play button now, notice it is moving down. You see, bam, it is moving down and we, well, touched our squirrel with the player. Let me just take the player here and actually the player can be set to be a trigger and I'm going to hit apply because anyways, we set him to be kinematic so he can set to be a trigger so that we don't roll over game objects as we just did with our squirrel. So if I hit the play button again, notice, bam, the game object is going down and notice now when it goes, actually it got deactivated. So let me try this again in the scene. Notice when it goes down here, bam, it is deactivated and we don't need it in the game anymore. So this was our first obstacle, we will have more obstacles, but before we proceed to create more obstacles, we are gonna create functionality in our side script or BG mover script to spawn these obstacles on random. So we will see that starting from the next video, but before we finish this one, here in the prefabs folder, create a new folder for enemy prefabs like this, and drag and drop the flag right here. Now the flag has this squirrel as a child game object, so it will be dragged along with it, but create a free prefab out of it because we're going to use the prefab to spawn that game object in our scene. Fahir here from awesometoots.com. I will see you guys in the next video. Before we end this video, don't forget that you can enroll in my most popular course, Create Your First RPG and First Person Shooter Multiplayer Game in Unity. Link is in the description below. And when you enroll in the course, you will also enroll in my giveaway competition and get a chance to win one of my cool prizes. First place will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place will win iMac 27 inch with 5K Retina display. And third place will win a MacBook Pro 13 inch laptop. Now, all you have to do to enroll in the giveaway and get a chance to win one of these cool computers is enroll in the course. Again, link is in the description below.